Cody said, I'm Nick. On paper, I'm the ICC rep for the club, but Gavin's actually been going more to meetings than me. But I, I'm going to let you know why I've been able to, why I've missed those meetings. And so it's for, for this program called NCOS. And so let's get started. So what it is, it's just a, it's a scholarship program specifically for community college students. So something you may have noticed in your time at community college is that it may be a little harder to get an internship, it might be a little harder to get a part-time job because anyone looking over your resume kind of just like, oh, passing you to City College. We'll look over and they'll go straight to the person at UCLA. And so what this is, is it's only for community college students. So it's an awesome opportunity for a government program like NASA. Um, so it's really not that hard to get accepted either. All it consists of is an application that you'll find online. Um, then you have to do a five-week online class that's not too intensive, and then you get to the, the really exciting part, which is one week at a NASA facility, all expenses paid. And so there is some requirements to apply. Unfortunately, NASA is pretty strict with this, so you have to be a U.S. citizen, which is very unfortunate, I know. Um, and then the other ones you shall be able to meet pretty easily. Just be uh, registered at a community college or two-year university, and then you have to have like nine credit hours, I think that's what it is. Yeah, nine hours, which is basically like a math class and a CS class. So I'm pretty sure all of you have already done that. Um, and so all you have to do, you can just Google NCOS or go to this website right here, fill out an application. You will need a letter of recommendation. And the application for the fall semester is due next Wednesday, the 17th. So if you have a professor you're close with and fine with like having a short-term recommendation, I'll definitely encourage that. But if not, I did the spring semester, and that's going to open up around May. So you have more than enough time for that. So you just need that recommendation, 500 word essay, and then anecdotally, everyone who I've talked to who's applied for the online portion has gotten accepted. That's around four or five people, but that's a lot higher than most internship programs that I know. So I think it's definitely worth your time to apply. Um, so what happens once you get to the online class? Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, the previous slide said that um, the requirement is concurrent enrollment or completion of nine plus hours STEM course mm -hmm. uh, So it's my first semester of year, mm -hmm. and I'm only in one um, math class right now. Okay. So would that not be enough to fulfill that? Mm. I'm not sure. You'd have to look at it. I know there was somebody who I went with who only completed, they completed a class before, and then they're enrolled in some. So maybe if... Because winter, winter enrollment is not until like another month or so. Yeah, like another month. Um, so I would look into it, but maybe you might have to wait till next semester okay. for the spring application. Um, okay, so once you get to the online class. So uh, I remember when I got told the online class was, it was the same time I had to take a, a five unit math class over summer and I was working on the weekends. And then I saw that the online class just perfectly lined up with all that stuff. And so I was like, there's no way I'll be able to complete this. I, I don't know what I'm going to do. I considered dropping it. But what I found out is that the class is really easy. There's like five online quizzes, but there's unlimited retries. So there's no reason not to get 100% on all the quizzes. So what I have to do is like watch some videos, read some articles, do the quizzes, keep it trying until you get 100%. And then at the, the last week, you have to do a project. There's different projects you can do. There's an essay. You could do a, uh, you, if you know any CAD, you can design a rover. And then there's, you can design a trip to Mars. So I just did the 10 page essay because I was pretty busy. I wanted something straightforward. I did that. I ended up getting a B on the essay. I ended up with an A in the class. And that ultimately got me accepted. So I'm not sure what the exact numbers are, but I know overall each semester they accept about 400 students. So you got a pretty good chance. If you just if you just do the quizzes and do a decent job on the final project, you have a really good chance of getting to the really exciting part, which is um, the on-site experience. Oh, and one thing I think it's important to mention is that if you apply for fall, the online class will be next month. So maybe if you have a super, super busy schedule, you might want to delay until spring. And that'll be over summer, so you might have more time to do the online class. So what happens when you get there? So what happens is you complete the online class, they notify you that you get accepted, and then you get to go to one of the nine NASA facilities. So that could be anywhere from JPL right down the street in Pasadena to Cape Canaveral in Florida. I ended up getting picked to go to John C. Stennis Space Center in Southern Mississippi. And that actually ended up being a really exciting place. That's where they did all the rocket testing for the lower stages of the rocket. So they have some really heavy duty equipment there. Um, they built it in the 60s for the Apollo missions. Um, so, okay, so once you get there, the first day, so let's see. So this is going to take five days of your time, this on-site experience. So it'll be a Monday through Friday. So you have to miss a week of class if you do it in fall, which I had to do. 
So the Monday will just be a travel day. You'll get there at night, you'll meet everybody, have dinner, but it's a pretty easy day. And then the Tuesday and Thursday, you guys are all, the 40 people who go to that site are all split into teams. You have to do um, a rover building competition, which is actually really cool. Because before this, I didn't really have any hands-on experience with engineering type stuff, but this like kind of forced me to do it. It forced me to learn how to work with the team, and it forced me to learn like the basics of robotics and programming. Um, so those first two days, you, you're working like 11, 12, 13 hours with your team, just building this rover, and then there's a competition at the end of every night. So it's not like it's a vacation. Like you guys are going to be working while you're there, but it's a lot. It's really fun work, and it's more fun than sitting in a classroom and then doing all work. Um, and then the last two days are mostly like professional development. You do some tours of the facilities, which I thought were really cool. And then there's a lot of panels with um, interns at NASA, professional engineers at NASA. You get to not only the panels, but after that, it's a pretty small group. So if you are if you put yourself out there, you definitely get to have some like one-on-one -on -one conversations with them, get to exchange like personal in contact information with them, which is super awesome because it's not like they're treating it like as something they have to do, but they're really interested in you and they really want you to succeed. It was, a, it, was, it was awesome having like professional maths engineers really believe in you almost. And so just to mention again, everything is paid for. So there's like, unless you don't meet one of the requirements, there's no reason not to do this program because it's not too time consuming. It's pretty easy to get in and then it's a free trip to NASA, so why not? And so I'm going to double on that more. What will you gain from doing this experience? So I broke it into three categories. The first one I think is generally like professional skills. So I broke it down into like team building skills and uh, problem solving skills. So before this, I spent my two years of PCC basically. Basically school here is like a one-on-one -on -one battle. It's you versus the tests, you versus the exams. Um, it's like there's sometimes in computer science classes you work with teams, but not that extensively. This one you get thrown into a pretty intense competition with nine other people you've never met with strict deadlines and a strict budget. And it's like you're given that almost a real world engineering problem you have to solve. And that's something I found like my brain really liked. And it's something I didn't really ever do before this experience. Um, I also learned a lot about what it takes to work with a team, what it means to be a good leader, and how to communicate effectively with people, especially when you don't think they have good ideas. Because that's something I've never really had to practice before, just being in school. Other thing I learned, I kind of talked about this in the last slide, was networking. So I got to meet one-on-one -on -one a lot of NASA engineers. I thought, I thought that they were going to like kind of be dismissive of us, just for like some random community college students, they probably get this stuff all the time, but they really like, personally like, took interest in us. They would like, after they did our tours and stuff, they would like come find us at dinner and they would be talking to us. Like it wasn't just all professional, we actually like got to know these people, it was an awesome time. Um, you get to meet other interns at NASA, how they applied to get the full eight week full time internship at NASA. A lot of them came through this program, a lot of them came through NCAS, that's how they got their foot in the door with NASA. And I know somebody here actually was a full-time internship at NASA, so maybe you can talk more about that. Um, you also get to meet a lot of new friends. Like the way, the way they had it set up for us is everyone who went to Stennis was from either Southern California or Arizona. And so I made a whole bunch of friends who were interested in STEM and live in the area. Like we're already organizing a tour to JPL so we can get all back together. So we met like a lot of close friends. And then the last thing is NASA experience. So who doesn't want to put NASA on their resume? Right? So even if you have terrible time, you hate the online class, you don't care about Mars, at the end of the day you get to put NASA on your resume. And so I think if you don't like anything else, you can at least get that. So that's all I really have to say. Do you guys have any questions or anything you want to ask? Uh, so you said everyone that you talked to got accepted? Was yeah. that the online class or the, the actual like, on-site thing? Um, I know about four or five people who applied online. All of them got accepted to the online class. And I know one person just didn't do the online class. So they obviously didn't get to go to the site. But everyone who's completed the online class I know has gotten into it. Yeah, on-site? On on-site, yes. Oh, okay. Yes. Oh. So what kind of a previous experience did everybody have when they were there at the NASA facility? Can you say it, say it again? What kind of previous experience did the people at the NASA facility Okay, that's a really good question. Because I'll. Oh, um, so what experience did everyone have before coming to the facility? That's a really good question because that's something I was wondering myself too. I thought I was going to be inadequate there because I only knew I only knew that like solve physics problems on paper. You know, I never actually put my skills to work. But when I got there, um, 
we were broken into a team. My team didn't really have STEM stu or engineering students, so I was worried we weren't going to do good. And there was another team, and they're talking about all this like machining work they do, all this like robotics work they do and stuff. And then I found out it didn't matter because my team won and their team did pretty bad actually. <laughs> so um, it's it's really just uh, it's, if you ever know the Lego Mindstorms, that's basically what you use. I thought that was going to be like super lame, but it, it's something that everyone can learn in two days and apply it and actually like, produce a rover that works within two days and you don't need any prior experience. I'll tell you, I didn't have any experience beforehand. Yes? Do you have another question? Oh. Uh, one question I have is, what was the essay on the online portion about? It was, for me, it was, it wasn't really essay, it was like three smaller essays. So there's four questions. So you basically, okay, you're given this 30 page document, which is um, a pretty technical description about the different ways to get to Mars, the different engines you can use, and the different timelines. And then you're asked four different questions and you get to choose three to write about. about what do you think is the optimal way to get to Mars? What engines are the optimal? And it's, you can write the entire essay just using that 30 page PDF they give you, basically. And last question, how many total you know how many total applicants there were? Uh, how many total applicants there were? No, I don't have the numbers on that. I know about 400 people get accepted total each each term, so 800 people a year. Yes? Um, so you can see you did the spring like, semester? Yes. Uh, so uh, it was an online class in the summer, and then the on site was um, during the fall semester? Yeah, so I applied in like May. My online class was pretty much lined up with PCC summer classes, which is July, five weeks, and then I just got back. Last week was my onset experience. Is that all? Okay. All right. Thank you. So